parents, family and friends, students, faculty and staff, and most importantly, the class of 2019. It is my honor and privilege to welcome you to Kent Hill School's 195th commencement ceremony. Graduation elicits different emotions from each of us. On the one hand, you're at the end of this leg of your journey. You will leave friends, trusted adults, and this beautiful place behind. On the other, this is the start of a new chapter for each of you. It is exciting to move on and use the knowledge and skills you have learned at Kent Hill School. So whatever emotions you are feeling today, they are all valid. There are many amazing journeys and stories of tremendous growth sitting on this stage today. Kent's Hill, in different ways, has been transformative for each and every student who will graduate today. Unfortunately, there are students who were not able to complete their journey with you. One of those students is Emmanuel Bajabayira. His death by suicide touched all of us. In thinking about his legacy, we have decided to honor all of the students who were not able to be here with you today. I want to take a moment to recognize the empty chair that symbolizes all of those who could not be here today. At each Kent's Hill commencement ceremony in the future, there will be an empty chair to remind us of all the students who were not able to complete their journey, their Kent's Hill journey with their classmates. I would now like to invite Reverend Park to give the invocation. Let us share a moment of reflection as I pronounce the invocation. Sirs of all life, we gather this morning to mark a moment of sacred transformation in the lives of the young adults graduating today. We come together filled with wonder and excitement, bringing our stories, our memories, our hopes and aspirations, our tears and our laughter. We are grateful for our families who sacrificed greatly and who nurtured and supported our journey. We are grateful for the countless moments in the Kent Hill community, time spent with our friends, teachers, coaches, dorm parents, administrators, and all those who shaped our lives and led us on a path of discovery, creativity, and knowledge. We are proud of the growth and achievement of these young people. As each student's name is called, bless their journey ahead, enrich their futures, making them full of promise and light. May they continue to shine while courageously embracing the challenges and opportunities to come. Holy One, we invoke your presence upon us in this sacred moment. As these amazing young people set out to have new experiences, to travel to places not yet visited, and to work for a better world, be our guiding light and bless their new beginnings. It is my pleasure and honor to introduce the class of 2019 senior speaker who was selected by our classmates to deliver the commencement address. Yeah, <laughs> oh. Yato is from Liberia and from the United States. She is the future. A student who has attended schools on multiple continents and has a view for a global future. I realized this morning that all three of us speaking today share a little of the same DNA. African Leadership Academy and Entrepreneurial Leadership. Diego and I both worked at ALA and Yato attended their Global Scholars Summer Program. I think many will agree with Yato's advisor that she can be described with three words that make her the special person she is. Passion, 
energy, and sass. <laughs> Yato brings a wonderful combination of these ingredients to our community, whether in the classroom, in the dorm, or on the stage. She has grown so much in her four years on the Hill, both as a student in and a person. This year, she has really found her voice and has been a leader in the group, our Students of Color and Allies organization. I am honored to introduce this year's senior class speaker, elected by her classmates, Yato Sakona Dennis. Good morning, everyone. As I begin, I would like to dedicate my speech to our dearly departed classmate, Emmanuel Bajabaira. We know you are here with us in spirit. It was a tough battle, but we made it, Baj, and this day is just as much yours as it is the rest of ours. I would like to open by thanking everyone for making it all the way out here from all over the globe to celebrate this memorable accomplishment with us. We know it is Memorial Day weekend, and a lot of you have traditions to observe and family and friends to remember, but this day wouldn't be the same without you as your prayers and words of encouragement gave us the strength to persevere and overcome the many obstacles and trials we have faced. Next, I want to express my gratitude to my class for choosing me to give this year's graduation speech. I am truly honored and hope that I live up to your expectations. Unfortunately, I do not have Mr. Cheney's clip-on glasses to add dramatic effect. <laughs> However, as my classmates probably know by now, I don't need the glasses because I am the dramatic effect. <laughs> I know how typical it is for this to be said, but I can tell you in all honesty that if you had told me four years ago that I would be up here speaking, I would have laughed. Freshman year, I was not at all outspoken. I was shy and could exp barely express my opinion without fizzling out into a murmur. Before I'd even been told that I would be doing the speech, I'd come up with all these ideas, practicing how I would say all these things, mostly just hyping myself up for the unknown. But as soon as I knew that I would be speaking, I went from thinking I was like Barack Obama to crap, how on earth am I gonna pull this off? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to all of you, I was stressed, frantically asking people for advice, hoping my speech would just magically appear. I can tell you now it did not work out that way. But after a few sleepless nights, I put some thoughts together that sum up what the class of 2019 is all about. I've been at Kent Hill School for four years, four long years. Freshman year on the Hill was a new beginning for a lot of us sitting here today. We had no idea what was in store for us, and I think it is safe to say that we were scared. Some of us were day students who could go home whenever, but many of us came from far away. I came here after spending many years in Lagos, Nigeria. I was nowhere short of terrified, but my classmates, without even knowing it, made me feel comfortable. Projects Week was an eventful time. Four year seniors, y'all know what went down. I don't know what was more scarring, Caden's performance on the bus, or having to scramble our way up the very difficult, very wet obstacle course at Monkey See, Monkey Do. When we came here, we were little kids with no real knowledge or concept of the world or what was important. I remember one of the first nights at Kent Hill, the freshman class sat in the Calhoun room and had an extensive discussion about which core value we would choose for the class. A good chunk of the class thought we would just pick sportsmanship because it had something to do with sports. But when we were challenged to talk about why specifically we wanted this to be our core value, it allowed us to really express our opinions without fear of being shut down or scared to say the wrong thing because of how open everyone was to hearing what we had to say. After our debate, the night died down into a series of jokes and laughter. We ran joyously around campus playing manhunt despite all the ugh freshman comments and enjoyed our time together, bringing us closer as a class. I don't think we thought much of it at the time, but that was a milestone for us as we took the first step towards our legacy of, as a class of 2019, which was enriched with each new member that joined our class over the years. Kensil has helped me grow in more ways than one and has taught me the true meaning of community. Within community, there is unity, and I have seen nothing but that as I have made my way through my years of high school. Friendship has played a big role in my life on the Hill, and I'm sure everyone sitting here can agree that the people that they have met and the bonds they have made are what have truly resonated with them throughout their time here. My besties, y'all know who you are. I would not be where I am today without you. If Kensal is anything, it is the foundation for strong bonds to last us a lifetime. It is where we learn the value of empathy and practice the ability to be a system of support. One day during sophomore year, while walking up from the dining hall, I dropped a necklace that meant everything to me. I spent the whole day freaking out, convinced that the necklace had blown off my neck in the wind and I would never find it again. Irene and I had barely been friends, but she went out with me in the cold rain and stayed with me until we had found it. 
Earlier this year, a number of us had no idea where we were going to college, and frankly, things weren't going our way. It was hard. Not being sure of what you're doing, what you're doing isn't easy. But when you have people to support you, it makes difficult times bearable. I remember one night I had been so upset because I had no idea where I was going to college, and I wasn't really getting into the schools I had hoped for. Lauren, who was facing her own uncertainties, just kept me company and told me that my blessing was coming. These are my own examples, and I'm sure all of you have your moments that you think back on. Not only have people been supporters and friends to me, but I've seen many instances of it taking place within the class. Jordan McDonald was the first com commit of the year to AIC. Go Bumblebees. I'm kidding, they're the Yellow Jackets. <laughs> His signing happened at the dining hall during lunch in the fall. There was one instance in particular that sticks out to me in terms of friendship. When Katie and Amelia arrived to the dining hall that day, they didn't know that Jordan's signing was happening. However, when they saw a table being set up in the corner, of course, they went to go see what was going on. When Ms. Hambrose told them what was happening, they lit up with excitement and was eager to help. Once Jordan got there, they stayed close by, taking as many pictures as they could, and various other classmates turned up. This was not the only time our classes gathered together in celebration of a classmate's achievements. When Trevor, Jake, and Isaac formed a group with Aaron and Tyler to start producing their own music, most of the class didn't hesitate to listen and support them. Trevor, Tyler, Isaac, I can say in all honesty that Outer Space Drip truly bumps. Well done. Whether it be Mariano and Gordon's bromance, or Jack and Nick playing strongly together on the field, Kat and Liz's lifelong friendship, or Grace and Amelia, oh, Grace and Gigi, sorry, never leaving each other's side, the examples are infinite. The point I'm trying to make is that the classes found support and comfort in each other in more ways than one. And when you look at who is sitting around you, you know that this is your family away from home. Over the course of our time on the Hill, we have had people we love leave us, and we have welcomed new classmates from all walks of life and learn to accept and love one another in our own interesting ways. We have learned a lot, grown a lot, and experienced a lot. We have pulled together in times of adversity, and boy, were there many times. Our adventures, and particularly our misadventures, have been platforms for our personal growth. I'm in no way undermining the education we receive from within the classroom, but acknowledging that the education we receive through our personal journeys and experiences is what truly transformed us from kids into young adults. The class of 2019 has many memories to take with us and cherish, whether it be arguing with our teachers, our inability to be serious for a marching practice, the skip day gone terribly wrong, or our loud, prideful cheers at sporting events, our strong leadership, and the impact we have had on our younger peers and perhaps maybe even the faculty. Our memories vary, but what is our legacy? Our legacy is our empathy, our support, our tolerance, but most importantly, our ability to love. Guys, I'm so honored to have been a part of this class and have every one of you by my side for all these years. I urge you to not look at this as an ending, but rather the beginning of another adventure that we are all making together. And even though we will take separate paths, we will forever remain a part of the Kenso family. Thank you for your time and God bless. Thank you, Yeto. That was wonderful. I'm very excited to introduce our commencement speaker today, Diego Antoneda. Diego comes to the United States, came to the United States from Peru to attend Williams College. After Williams, he joined McKinsey and Company, a world-leading consulting firm. Ms. D and I met Diego when he joined African Leadership Academy to work with the CEO. He was an amazing colleague and friend, and as a lifetime educator, I didn't even hold it against him that he was a consultant trying to get into an MBA program. Diego eventually did go to Stanford Business School, but with a new lens. African Leadership Academy changed and inspired him. He was on a mission, a mission to open the Latin American version of African Leadership Academy. As the co-founder and CEO of Latin American Leadership Academy, I'm happy to say he's well on the way. They have run nine boot camps in three different countries and will run boot camps in three more countries this summer. They plan on opening the full two-year version 
of Latin American Leadership Academy in 2020. Diego was a featured speaker at the European Union in February about change makers in education, was named an Echoing Green Fellow in 2018, the leading fellowship for social entrepreneurs. Diego is at the forefront of leadership education globally. Well, that concludes the formal part of my introduction. I'm going to go off script for a minute. People often look at me weird when I talk about entrepreneurial and what that means. When I told Ms. D and Ms. Cole earlier this week that De Diego was due to arrive on Friday night, they both started freaking out a little. What if he misses his flight? Well, fast forward to Friday. Diego lands, travels through Panama to Washington, D.C., the maybe not friendliest immigration service in the world, delays his passing through immigration and he misses his flight to Portland. Miss D1, Chris zero. <laughs> so then, Diego and I are trading WhatsApp messages, we'll figure this out. Diego gets to Manchester, not Portland, a little before midnight last night. Speed up the story a little, $350 a day to rent a car. Thankfully, I would have paid, but thankfully Diego is at a startup, so he knows the value of a dollar. And so, but as any young tech-savvy person, he then checked Uber, 250 Still too much. So, 1 o'clock in the morning, he takes an Uber to his hotel room and... Why wouldn't you ask Dimitri, the Albanian Uber driver, if he might go off script with him and drive him not as an Uber driver, but just as a person? <laughs> sure. So Diego goes to bed at 1 with Dimitri due to pick him up at 5 at the hotel. The bonus was Diego even got to practice his speech in the car with Dimitri, the Albanian Uber driver. So... With that, I introduce my friend, Diego Antoneda, to give the commencement address. When I was 12, my family ran out of money. The bank took our house. We lost many things. I call this first chapter a rude awakening. But it's something I've learned to be deeply grateful for. Because while it was rude, it was an awakening. I credit my empathy, my awareness, my resilience to this experience. Um, it also forced me to push myself harder to work harder, to study harder than I ever would have. I 100% would not be here if things had gone differently. Chapter two, unanswered questions. It's a sunny December day in Lima, Peru. It's 2006 and I'm graduating high school. Unfortunately, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know what my thing is. I do know there's a lot of suffering in the world, a lot of injustice. I do know that the leaders that are supposed to be fixing these problems are failing epically or making things worse. I do know that I cannot turn my back on these problems or my life is just going to feel empty. At the same time, I don't know what I can do with the skills that I had from high school, no skills, no networks. No money. So, I win some awards. I collect my diploma. But I don't find a purpose. I don't find a thing that I want to do. In chapter three, I search. I search for experiences, for skills, for credentials, for networks, for friends, for ideas. I go places and I try things. 
I go to Williams College, I go to University of Oxford, and I try the research hat. I try the public policy hat. I try the development economics hat. They don't quite fit. I, I learn things, I meet people, but I move on. I then go to San Francisco, I work at McKinsey and Company. I try on the business hat, the consulting hat, the jet setter hat. It's a nice hat, looks pretty, looks pretty fancy. But it doesn't quite fit. I learn things, I meet people, I move on. I moved to Johannesburg to work at African Leadership Academy where I met Chris and Lisa. I try on the social entrepreneurship hat, the education hat, the nonprofit hat. It's not a hat that has a, much of a shine to it, but it does fit. Huh. And I learn things and I meet people. In chapter four, I find my purpose. I wonder why I found my purpose in Johannesburg, of all places. Ken Hill, unfortunately, I don't bring to you the formula for finding your purpose. All I have is what it took for me to find mine. First, there were things I cared about deeply, intellectually, viscerally. These were the problems and questions that I had already had in my head back in December of 2006. Two, I was seeing that these problems were not magically going away. Whatever humanity was trying was not working. Three, getting to the point that I realized that I had, after all this searching, enough skills, enough networks, enough experiences, enough credentials to at least enter the fight. To be clear, I never got to the point where I was like, ah, I'm 100% gonna win. Still not there. But I had found one powerful idea that if it worked, it could change the world. The idea I got at African Leadership Academy was that instead of me trying to find the one thing that I cared about, we could just find the hundreds of people who had already found theirs and we could empower them to win their fights. And after I realized I had enough of these experiences, skills, networks, resources to at least give it a shot, I could not stop thinking about it. So I became a little bit obsess obsessive about this. This idea was alive in me. I could set out on a quest to find hundreds, if not thousands of Latin Americans who also wanted to transform the continent. And I could use every little piece of legitimacy, of access, of skills, connections that I had accumulated all these years to help them win their fights. And if we were deliberate about building a community, a continental community united by a common purpose to make the continent a better place, then this could become a force for good as the world had never seen. If you think that my work is partly inspired by the great works of cinema and literature like The Avengers, X-Men, Ender's Game, you're not wrong. <laughs> of course, this more beautiful world was just in my head. I could just turn my back on it, tell no one, just keep living a happy life. But to be honest, I was trapped by the fear of how I would measure my life in the future if I never even tried. And compared to that fear, the fear of failure, the fear of poverty, they were nothing. That was when I knew it was time for me to return to Latin America. In chapter five, I fight my fight. Developing Latin American Leadership Academy while trying to get a bis an MBA from Stanford while seeing my savings account steadily approach zero is probably the hardest thing I've ever done. And to be fair, after graduating, it didn't get much easier. I feel more stress, more anxiety, I have more sleepless nights than ever before. I feel like my evenings, my weekends, my holidays, they're no longer mine. But the highs are also higher. I get to handpick everyone around me. My co-founder, my team, our students, our donors, our advisors, our allies. 
And I get to see them fulfill their own missions through our work. What a privilege. And I'm also learning every day. I'm learning how to deal with the negatives, learning how to take better care of myself, better care of my team, how to celebrate more. In the end, in spite of all the downsides, I have this quiet realization that I'm finally being 100% true to myself. And it's knowing that that lets me know that I'm doing the right thing and that I just have to keep going. Sorry. I shared my story with you because I don't have much else to give you. I haven't done some incredible research and I haven't lived long enough to bring you some universal truths. But it is a commencement speech and in the hope of giving you something that will hopefully, that you can hopefully take with you, here's some lessons that I have picked up along the way. And I don't know if knowing these at your age would have changed anything about my journey, but I, I do hope that it might reduce a little bit that ex existential angst that some of you might have. So here they go. First, find a way to be grateful for everything. Find the silver lining. Just like poverty was my secret coach that taught me empathy, that made me more aware, that pushed me to run faster and fight harder. Stay on the lookout for those hidden coaches that life might put in your way. Lesson two, hold on to your big questions, even if no answer is apparent. Your life is a puzzle in the making, so keep looking for those pieces that might make the picture make sense at some point. What I do now is quite simply the answer to those questions I had when I was your age. Three, if you're looking for purpose, again, I don't have an answer, um, but I, here's how I found mine. Find a big unresolved problem in the world that you care deeply about, and then arm yourselves with the skills, the experiences, the people, the resources, the knowledge, the ideas, so that one day you too can at least enter the fight. As an aside, if you haven't yet found anything you care about, try new things. Immerse yourself in a new culture. Read more books. Listen more. Meet new and different people. Volunteer at Latin American Leadership Academy. <laughs> Four, choose the fears and risks that you're comfortable with. Don't just ask, what if I fail? Crucially ask, what if I don't even try? And what if I succeed? Another aside, failure is an essential part of any creative and innovative process. So it's just not a big deal. Five, consider thinking about your life in phases or chapters. I do believe that you can live many, many lives, just maybe not all at once. There might be a chapter for learning, for exploration, for taking risks. There might be a chapter for investing in yourselves and a chapter for investing in others. There might be a chapter where you take care of yourselves, and that's fine. In the end, this is all just an invitation for you to discover the world, discover yourselves, and to have the courage, or to find the courage, to answer that call when it calls. Class of 2019, I hope your lives become beautiful adventures and that one day I get to hear your stories too. I wonder what stories will you write for yourselves? Congratulations on finishing this chapter of your lives. Thank you, Diego. It is now my privilege to present the Graduation Day Awards. The Lois Masterman Award, given in her memory to that girl of the senior class who, in the opinion of her classmates and the faculty, 
most exemplifies the following philosophy of living. To be helpful to others to make, and to make something useful of my life, which was Lois Masterman's motto. The award goes to Lauren Murray. Class of 1913 award is given in memory of the class of 1913, awarded to that senior who in the estimation of the faculty has exercised the greatest influence for good during the year. This year's award goes to Nick Lindquist. The Luther and Lydia Sampson Award is given in memory of the school's founders to a senior who was excelled in the classroom and in extracurricular activities. This year's award goes to Rebecca Penzer. The Knowles Prize is given in memory of Mark T. Knowles, class of 1885, awarded to a senior for excellence in scholarship and outstanding merit. This year's award goes to Leo Dong. The Riss Bonifon Principal Award, to be awarded to a student who has demonstrated an exceptional commitment to the well-being of the Kent Hill School community and who, through example, has provided the school with positive and effective leadership. This year's award goes to Dean Chamberlain. I would now like to invite Edward Lane, President of the Board of Trustees, Meadow Davis, Assistant Head of School, and Erica Shoup, Director of Student Learning, to join me in presenting the Class of 2019 with their diplomas. Jillian Comer. Mariah Webster Charland. Lillian Emily Poulin. Suyin Yen <laughs> S 
Sofia Gomez Pedreira. Shema Al Fahim <coughs> Katia Rose Zeleniak. Megan Elizabeth Sherwinski. <laughs> Elizabeth Lucille Hammond. I would like to call my husband, Dan Chute. Grace Rebecca Chute. Halil Ibrahim Coach. <laughs> Sawyer Keith Gorman. Raynor Knut Alstrin Munich. <laughs> Alisa Stanislavovna Tarasova. Wendy Merriam Appesdorf. <laughs> Rebecca Penzer. Grace Elizabeth Kistelinek. <laughs> Gabrielle Aurora Matzinger. The you, Joe. <laughs> Joe Fong.
Ethan David Fisher. Masaki Funakoshi. Irene Kim. <laughs> Alec Constantine Hazen Papa Nicolau. Yeto Iarma Sakona Dennis. <laughs> Jordan William James McDonald. Andrew Berzik Sweeney. <laughs> Braden Robert Larochelle. Sebastian Constantino Diaz Londoño. Ariana Courtney Love Pierman. Catherine Josephine Gibbs. I would like to ask Dick and Joanne O'Connor to please come forward. Bridget Barbara O'Connor. Amelia Grace Terrio. <laughs> Kathleen Marie Nealon.
I would like to ask Doug Sims to please come forward. Caden Timothy Sims. Rohan Reddy Devuru. <laughs> Abbott Elizabeth Fordyce. Han Lin Evan Michael Di Giovanni. Jake Foster Hall. Zachary Logan Bouvet. Nevin Lily Sabatini. I would like to ask Steve Bell to please come forward. Isaac Cass Bell. <laughs> Philippe Dmitri Zavidov. Dean Monroe Chamberlain. <laughs> Lua Chen Dung. Michael Daniel Tag Roberts. Let's go, guys. 
Nicholas Alexander Lindquist. Gordon Beckwith the third. Mark Antoine Valence. Lauren Elizabeth Murray. O'Shea Nayan Hosang. Jonathan Charles Edwards. Benjamin Winfield McBride. Wong Jonathan Ryan Fifield. Michael Christopher Macchioni. <laughs> Jatan Desai. Long Xuan Ding <laughs> Taishi Aoki. I would like to ask Mike Hannon to please come forward. Graham Rains Hannon. Trevor Reynold Watson. Egid Odarty Mills. Drew Allen Gardner. <laughs> 
Samuel Pascal Gelbert. Mariano Morales Gutierrez. William Charles Pond. <laughs> William Andrew Walsh. Mason James Keene. <laughs> Hank Josta. So maybe one more time for the class of 2019. And then chaos ensued. All right, class of 2019, get yourself sorted out up there. <laughs> so my charge to the class of 2019. Congratulations, class of 2019. Here we are. For me, one last opportunity to address you. For you. One final click of the glasses. <laughs> As many of you can attest, pulling off final assignments in this last week was not easy, given where you wanted to focus your attention, on spending time together with your friends. I can empathize. I, too, had the challenging task of writing today's talk. Preparing a meaningful commencement speech every year can be a bit daunting. How do you make it engaging? relevant, not too long, and with some worthy advice that's not too cliche. When I reflected back on this year, came back to my opening talk in Bodmin, where I shared with you the term all in, taken from our athletics department, a phrase that speaks to one of the pivotal values that drew me to Kent's Hill, community. Don't worry, I'm not gonna focus on all in. While it's a great phrase, I have a sense that you've heard it enough this year. However, I do want to focus on an important ingredient that goes into community and being invested. And I have to pause and acknowledge something here. I'm about to borrow another phrase. This time it does not come from the athletic department, but from a beer advertisement. As, ma as many of you know, especially those in my public and digital communications class, a big part of my job requires travel. While in an airport restaurant waiting for a connecting flight, saw an advertisement for Bud Light that said, 
Phones down, faces up. In so many ways, this is exactly what Kent's Hill has prepared you to do. Not to drink beer. <laughs> At least not yet. But to focus your time and energy on the things that matter. Your teachers have asked you to leave your phones at the door. We have purposely asked meal, that meal times in the dining commons be technology free in a place where we interact face to face with one another. We have largely honored those requests. It always gives me great pleasure to see students, faculty and staff sitting, eating and interacting in varied groups and not on their phones. Borrowing from Budweiser, and in the spirit of not plagiarizing, I want to offer my own version of this concept. Face up, show up. This idea has been pivotal in my own life when I think about the personal connections that I've developed on three different continents. I don't want to pretend that it's easy. In fact, just last weekend, I had the most important Board of Trustees meeting in my time at Kent Hill School. At the end of it, all I wanted to do was watch soccer and relax and maybe have a beer. But what I needed to do was show up. One of Misty and my advisees from African Leadership Academy was graduating from Trinity College, which required rushing from the meeting for a five hour drive to Connecticut. But we showed up for her. While being there for her, she achieved a milestone of being the first in her family to graduate from college, meant the world to her and her family it was equally rewarding to me to watch her receive hugs and congratulations from the president of Trinity College and hear endless professors joyfully share her accomplishments reminded me of why I believe in the power of education. After an exhausting week, it reinvigorated my spirit and to think I might not have shown up for her. In so many ways, each of you has learned to show up in your time at Kent's Hill. The class of 2019 led Kent's Hill Athletics to unprecedented success. Starting with your all-in attitude. Oh, I had to slip that in one more time. You won more MESAD championships than any other school this year. <laughs> While this takes talent, talent alone does not win championships. You win championships when you show up. You show up for practice. You show up for your teammates. You also showed up as fans. The field hockey team showed up at Proctor to cheer on our most successful football team in 20 years. The football and boys soccer team showed up to watch the girls soccer team beat Hebron for the first time in a decade. And almost the whole school showed up for the girls hockey team as they defeated Hebron at the culmination of Winter Carnival. It's only a little awkward. <laughs> you showed up in class. All right. You're probably going to fall on me now. You showed up in class. You collaborated, discussed, debated, read, solved problems. And frankly, you did way too much homework. For each and every one of you, you've learned to show up for academics or learn from not showing up for your academics. But we know that our failures have just as much to teach us as our successes, if not more. Nonetheless, you have all learned how to show up for learning. This, more than anything else, will serve you well as you embark on the next leg of your educational journey. You showed up for community service, both on and off campus. You gave thousands of hours of service to people and organizations in our community who needed help. Many of you showed up in, a, in the dish room or to lend a helping hand when it wasn't required. A number of you also traveled to Slidell, Louisiana to continue a 16 year tradition of helping a community ravaged by a series of de devastating hurricanes and natural disasters. You showed up for something you believed in that impacts your lives beyond campus. You traveled to conferences on diversity, and inclusion and viewed the hate you give. You listened to student perspectives. You welcomed over 60 community members to campus to share an iftar dinner during Ramadan and argued for press freedom and universal human rights during Model UN. You also found purpose working with the Travis Mills Foundation 
and through internships in law enforcement, government, health care, and education. You took stock in our recycling system and collected cans and bottles to pay for a water bottle filling station. You also consumed a lot of iced coffees in plastic cups with plastic straws from the student center along the way. But that's a problem for next year's class to solve. This year, you also showed up for each other after Emmanuel took his own life. It was and will be for many of us one of the most difficult experiences we will ever face. You shared your grief, your tears, your vulnerability, and your healing. As I said then, and I couldn't have been more proud of how you all showed up for each other. You showed up to support your friends. Sometimes this was to celebrate them at an art gallery opening, or music recital, or theater production. Other times it was during Vespers, Lunar New Year, or international dinner. Sometimes it was to help them get over a breakup, or maybe to help them get through a discipline situation. Sometimes it was just to listen. Let me share one more of story of my own. I turned 50 this year, and it wasn't pretty. One of my closest friends turned 40 the same week. He lives in South Africa and we communicate almost daily by WhatsApp. However, our friendship is cemented in being there in person for each other. So we decided to celebrate our collective 90 years together in London to watch our favorite our, both of our rival soccer teams play each other. It ended a 1-1 draw, so we both left satisfied. While technology keeps us con connected, it will never replace showing up in person for each other, both in times of celebration and setback. Today, many graduation speakers have been giving bold, generous gifts, whether paying off student loans or giving Red Sox tickets. Unfortunately for you, <laughs> I'm not in a position to do either of those. However, what I want to suggest is that Kent's Hill has given you something incredibly valuable. The gift of the person sitting next to you or across from you. Personal relationships cannot be quantified in dollars or ticket prices. The relationships you built here with your classmates, teachers, dorm parents, coaches, and many more are priceless. We'd like to pause and ask you to look up, look around, find the faces of those who have shown up for you. First look at your classmates, then take a look beyond to your family, friends, faculty, and loved ones. These are the people that will always be there for you, be it at your wedding or the birth of your child. They'll be the ones you call when you face a setback. They will celebrate with you, and they will lift you up when you need to be lifted up. I believe that even though we are increasingly connected by technology and digital devices, it's essential, it's essential that we invest in these face-to-face -face connections. In a world designed for convenience and ease, we must not forget that personal connections require effort and sometimes come at inconvenient times. But nothing is more worthwhile and rewarding. As our Project Wayfinder research tells us, when we practice gratitude and invest in people, we lead happier, more meaningful lives. We'd like to personally recognize you, the class of 2019, for all that you've done to make our Kent Hill community a better place. So use those devices to, connect with, to stay connected to one another, but don't forget to show up in person. And remember, you can always show up on the Hill. Face up, show up. Thank you and congratulations. I'd now like to invite Reverend Park to do the benediction. Holy One, who is the source of new beginnings, as we embark upon our new journey, send us with a renewed hope and a bold vision for creating a better world. May we bring with us the knowledge, skills, reflections, and character imparted to us by the Kentil community and use these as a source of continual growth 
and inspiration in our life journey together. May we understand in a profound way how all of us are unique, yet intrinsically connected as one human family, working together for the common good of the whole world. Class of 2019, may you enter into the wider world with courage and hope. May your lips speak good, thoughtful, honest, and loving words. May your minds pursue deep questioning and moments of awakening. May your heart burn with a passion for living the ideal that one person of a principle can always make a difference. Say hi, Katie. Say hi. Hi, baby. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs>